battles with a demon, prayers with a goddess, and a super dope road trip. We've got it all on this episode of Gilgamesh and Fred. When we last left off, basically everyone was telling Gilgamesh that going to fight Humbaba was a really bad idea. But Gilgamesh was all like, But I really want to kill him though, dudes! Because, seeing how Humbaba was still very much alive, it meant that nobody had killed him yet. Which in turn, meant Gilgamesh could do something no one else had ever done. Of course, by that logic, he could have just literally killed anybody else that was still alive, or really just probably brushed his teeth. But who am I to gainsay heroes? So, Gilgamesh went off to get some sweet buffs before killing the giant guardian of the Forest of the Gods. And what might be the best buff of them all, you might ask? A blessing from the gods. So he dragged his new friend and wrestling buddy, Enkidu, to meet his mom. And Gilgamesh's mom, the goddess queen Ninsun, was all like, Aw, you look nice today, honey. Who's your little friend? So Gilgamesh introduced Enkidu and said, Ugh, Mom, can you just, like, intercede with the gods for us? Ah, <sighs> okay, honey, she said, and proceeded to take seven baths of tamarisk and soap wort. Because A, baths are super relaxing, and B, gods just seem to like you better if you bathe for some reason. So, I mean, that's just two birds with one stone right there. Afterward, she got on her best gown, went up to the roof, grabbed a censer, and said, Shamash, why did you have to make my son so proud? And after guilt-tripping the great god Shamash for a while, basically extorted a blessing to help Gilgamesh out. But the way it was phrased, though, it sort of sounded like the blessing was for her family. So being very clever, she was like, Wild boy Enkidu, come here. I'm just going to adopt you real quick. And boom, Gilgamesh and Enkidu were brothers. So the brothers' mesh went off to do some monster slaying. It was a long way to the forest of the cedars, but being heroes of Legend! They walked 150 miles a day, closing the distance in little time. Then, on the third day, when they rested, Enkidu made a House of the Dream God, air quotes, which we'll assume for the wholesome nature of this show, is entirely substance-free. Okay? All right. Once completed, Gilgamesh went inside, crashed hard, and proceeded to have prophetic dreams. The next morning, he woke screaming, Oh god, oh god, a mountain fell on us, bro! But Enkidu was all like, Whoa, 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 don't worry, man. It's a good omen. The mountain was totally Humbaba, and you were capturing him from underneath, not being crushed by him at all, dude. And Gilgamesh, never the sharpest cookie in the box, was like, Oh, cool, and took Enkidu's explanation at face value. Three days later, though, he went back into the house of the dream god again. And he awoke once more crying. Dude, 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 this time I was wrestling a bull, right? But it kicked up like so much dust that the world turned black and it forced me to my knees. But then like a handsome bro came up to me and gave me a nice drink. So uh, I don't know what to think, bro. Ever the pragmatist, Enkidu replied. <laughs> oh, rad, dude. Good omen. The bull was totally our protector, Shamash. And the dude was totally your dad. <laughs> Gilgamesh once again calm, they walked on. And three days after that, it was of course back into Mr. Magic's happy hut for Gilgamesh. This time, he woke up trembling. <laughs> the heavens screamed, the earth shook, lightning rent the sky, and fire burned the ground, dude! <laughs> and when the fire flared, it rained death, and all that was left in the world was cinders, bruh! And Enkidu, positive as always, replied, Sweet! Totes good omen, bruh! Because that dream was the most metal one yet! <laughs> and once again, they went on their way. Now this dream diary stuff happens twice more on sections of tablet that have largely become a fine powder by this point. But it's safe to assume that Gilgamesh had two more dreams of ever-escalating terror, which Enkidu let him know were totally about his success. Good wingman there. Finally, they near the Forest of Cedars. Gilgamesh cries out to Shamash for aid, and Shamash tells him that he'd better go right now and smash Humbaba, 
because while the giant usually wears seven layers of armor, he's only sporting one right now. He must have just woken up. So these two heroes, being mighty men of manly mind, spring right into action. But even as they leap to fight the giant, fear grips Enkidu. How can they win against such a powerful beast? But Gilgamesh tells him that they'll win with the power of teamwork. Because that's how a team works. And so they rush off again and finally encounter Humbaba, who opens up with some really serious smack talk about how Enkidu doesn't even know who his mom is and therefore is only worthy to talk to turtles, who in this universe apparently don't know who their mother is either. Uh, sure, okay, but then once the tough turtle talk is done, it's time for weird face contortions. That's right, not a fight yet, says it on the tablet. Humbaba makes his ropey, wormy face even more hideous. And Gilgamesh is like, nope, 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 that's it, I'm out, dude, peace, and books it for the hills. But Enkidu stops him and reminds him of the power of teamwork and how that's how a team works and also about the really sweet weapons they'd forged. Confidence returned again, they go back to fight the giant. As the fight finally begins, Shamash, true to his word, gets in on the action and summons the 13 winds to buffet the giant and keep him from moving. Then, the heroes of legend kick around the much less mobile Humbaba for a bit until he admits defeat and offers to serve Gilgamesh. Now, Gilgamesh is about to take him up on this offer when we get a bunch of tablet fragments that just have Enkidu saying, Grind up! Kill! Pulverize! Over and over again. Or in some translations, I kid you not, he says, Finish him! So while we don't know exactly what happens, it appears that that persuasive argument won the day, and Gilgamesh promptly lopped off Humbaba's head to take back as a trophy. Then they spent a lot of time chopping down a cedar from the Forest of the Gods and talking about what a really sweet door they were going to make. And with the thrilling home renovation portion of the tale over, thus ends the story of Gilgamesh's quest for Humbaba. One ogre dead, one set of door materials obtained, and the power of teamwork once again proving to be the strongest power of them all. Aw, that's right, furry bro. Friendship's the best.